Now, Roma Wines. R-O-M-A. Made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. Roma Wines present... Suspense. Tonight, Roma Wines bring you Mr. Sheldon Leonard and Mr. Elliot Reed in Feast of the Furies, a suspense play produced, edited, and directed for Roma Wines by William Spear. Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills, is presented for your enjoyment by Roma Wines. That's R-O-M-A, Roma Wines. Those excellent California wines that can add so much pleasantness to the way you live. To your happiness in entertaining guests. To your enjoyment of everyday meals. Yes, right now a glass full would be very pleasant as Roma Wines bring you Sheldon Leonard and Elliot Reed in a remarkable tale of... Suspense! I just followed the orders... I did just like I was told. After all, when your boss tells you, we... Well, I didn't exactly want to do it, but... It's good pay, and I like good pay. Oh, boss, money's not everything, they say. Well, what happens if there ain't any, and then I ain't got no clothes and no food or no nothing? I did just like I was told. I, I took the man where I was supposed to, and I, I watched him a little while, and then I walked away and left him. He sure was a little fella. I felt kind of sorry for him in a way. He, he looked harmless to me. Kind of sad, too. I wanted to be his friend, but... Well, I, I had to cock him once over the back of the head. Made a funny sound. Guess it didn't hurt him much, though. After I tied him up and sat him up in the car beside me, he, he came to in a little while. Oh. Oh. Well, hello. <laughs> hey, you feeling better? My head. It hurts. Yeah, I guess it will for a while. There's a lump. Well, I guess there would be. I'm sorry, little fella. My hands. They're tied. My feet are, too. Yeah, they sure are. I tied them. But why? Well, I didn't want to get rough again. You're such a little guy. I don't even know you. <laughs> well, I don't know you. Who are you? Oh, just call me Casey. My, my last name, well, it don't matter. Casey? I don't know anybody by that name. I don't... Oh, my head. Now, look, we could have a nice trip out of this. This is a beautiful drive. Can you see out there? See, we're, we're driving right along next to the ocean. Where are you taking me? Oh, it's not far now. Don't start acting up. I want this to be a pleasant trip. I like company. Sure, but my hands, they hurt. Couldn't you just loosen the rope a little? I don't think I should. Now, you might try something and then... Well, I don't think I'd better. I don't have any money, you know. Oh, now, you don't think I'm a thief, do you? Oh, I... I can't figure it out, that's... Now, all. never you mind. You just lean back and enjoy yourself. Hey, gee, that ocean is big, eh? Just look at it. Look at those waves. Why, they, they never stop. They just keep flapping. Uh-huh. Casey. Yeah? Got a cigarette? Yeah, sure thing. Sure. I'll, I'll even light it for you. Here. Thanks. Oh, that's all right. I want to be your friend. Well, that is, if you let me. Sure. We'll be friends. Just no rough stuff. Oh, no. No rough stuff. <sighs> Gee, the cigarette tastes good. Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh... Your name is Sam, ain't it? Yeah. Why? Well, uh, I just wanted to make sure. What do you mean? Well, uh, I gotta be sure I got the right guy, just like he told me. Who told you? Oh, never mind. Never mind. Are we going far? No, not much further. Hey, you can even help me look for the place. 
place. What place? They fished there in the summer. Summer's gone now. Won't be anyone there. there. There'll be a sign. It'll be on your side of the road. It'll say, Cook's Place Live Bait. A big sign. I smell something burning. I don't smell anything. Oh, now look at you. See what you've done. You're trying to burn that rope. Oh, guess I gotta stop the car. But my hands, they're numb. Well, I'm disappointed in you, Sam. Well, you only burn the ends of the rope. There's no harm done. Gee, you can't trust no one these days. I'm sorry, Casey. I won't do it again. Sun's going down fast. I guess I better step up. Gotta be on time. Meeting someone? No, not just me and you. There'll be no one else. It's getting cold. I wish I had some coffee. Yeah, I sure would like some too. But couldn't we stop at the next stand we see? I wouldn't try anything. Well, I'll think about it. Look, we're coming to a place. How about it? I don't think I better. No, there's, there's too many people. I'll get some on my way back. You'll get some. But me? What about me? Gee, Sam, I'm sorry. You ain't ever coming back. Suspense, Roma Wines are bringing you Sheldon Leonard and Elliot Reed in Feast of the Furies, a radio play by David R. Gillespie. Roma Wines presentation tonight in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Between the acts of Suspense, this is Truman Bradley with a cooling suggestion for you men who've had more than your share of hot weather lately. It's simply this. Loosen your collar, saddle back, and enjoy America's smartest, coolest summer drink, Roma wine and soda, iced. So cool to come home to. Yes, no matter how hot the day, Roma wine and soda offers you quick, delicious, thirst-quenching refreshment, a cool, tempting treat for the whole family. And when friends drop by these sultry summer evenings, Nothing could be more delightful to serve than tasty to sip, easy to prepare Roma wine and soda. Now, here's all you do. Just half fill a glass with Roma, California Burgundy, or Sauterne, or any other Roma wine type you prefer. Then add ice. Fill with sparkling water and stir. For a sweeter taste, simply add sugar. And remember, because Roma wines are selected from the world's greatest reserves of fine wines... A cooler made with Roma is better tasting every time. So, when the occasion or the weather calls for cool, satisfying refreshment, try Roma wine and soda, iced. Insist on Roma, R-O-M-A, Roma wine. Discover for yourself why more Americans enjoy Roma than any other wine. And now, Roma wine brings back to our Hollywood soundstage... Sheldon Leonard as Casey and Elliot Reed as Sam in Feast of the Furies, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. So the little fella kept me company all the way to the place. He didn't try anything, and we got along swell. I... I turned left off the highway, and I drove for about a mile over that old dirt road, and then I saw the sign, Cook's Place Live Bait. And there was the wharf, just like you said. There wasn't anyone around, and so I stopped the car right near the beach. The wind was coming up across the beach, and... I wished I'd have brought an overcoat for Sam because he was actually shaking when I untied his legs. And then we started to walk toward the wharf. Well, don't fall down. My legs, they've been tied so long. 
Gee, it's cold. Hey, I'm sorry, Sam. I'd let you have my overcoat, but... Well, then I wouldn't have any. That's right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What are you counting? The poles under the wall. Poles? Yeah, come on. We, we got to walk over there under the wall. Might not be so windy, Dan. Yeah. What time is it? It's quarter after seven. Yeah, I'm just on time. Look, Casey, I don't understand all this. Oh, don't think about it, Sam. We just got a job to do, and let's get it over with. But out here, there's no one. The wharf's deserted. Hey, look, I just do what I'm told. I I get paid for it, and I don't ask questions. I know that, Casey, but don't you see? I don't know you. I've never done anything. You're all mixed up. Come over here and sit down by this pole. The tent pole from the end of the wharf, he said. Sure, Casey. Sure. The sand's wet. I can't help it, little fella. You're gonna untie my hands now? Yeah. I'm going to untie them. But remember... Okay, Casey. I'm no fool. You're twice as big as I am. Well, just remember that, then. Gee, you get skinny wrists like a woman's. <laughs> I tied this pretty good, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah. That better? Oh, much better. What a relief. Thanks. You better rub them good. Yeah. Bring back the circulation. Yeah. yeah. See, I got to tie them again. Only back of the pole. No, Casey. No. But I got to them's orders. Whose orders, Casey? Whose orders? My bosses. Everyone's got a boss. Yeah. How about me being your boss, Casey? How about it? Are you already got a good boss? What's he pay you, Casey? Well, all well, that depends. You could work for me. I'd pay you much more. You ain't got no money, Sam. Yes, I have. You think I'm dumb, don't you? No, I don't. You're smart. Plenty smart, believe me. Well, I'm not dumb. I get by. Look, Casey, work for me. Forget about your other boss. I'll give you anything you ask for. I know you're a kind little fella. You're crooked. You better just forget it. Come on. Come on. Now, back with your hands. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, now, good and tight. Oh, please, Casey. It hurts. It ain't gonna hurt long, Sam. No. Why not, Casey? Why not? You'll see. Look, I'm awfully cold. Couldn't you build a fire? Well, I never thought of that. I, I guess I could, but... No, no, no. We gotta be alone. We're alone? There's no one here. It's getting dark. The people will see and they'll wonder. There's no one around. You said so yourself. Uh, uh, smoke travels and the people see it. I was a bum once and smoke got me in trouble. Please, Casey. No, I'm smart, see? Not from books, mind you. Just from living. Casey? I'm starting to get wet. Yeah. Yeah, now, now, now that's something I don't know about. Them waves out there, they don't ever stop. They come in and they go out. In and out, in and out. What? Look, Casey. Will you be my friend? Now, ain't that a silly question? I am your friend. I like you, Sam. Then tell me why... Why we're here, you and me. All I know is that I had to bring you here. I was to be here at a quarter after seven, which I was. I was to tie you under this wharf, to tie you to the tent pole from the end of the wharf. Well, you tied him. And now I got to go up and sit on a pier for exactly three hours. Three hours? It's a long time. Oh, I don't mind it. Only you're cold, huh? Say, what's your boss's name, Casey? Jake. Jake. Jake Larkin. Yeah, that's it, you know him? Yeah, I know him. He's a fine boss. Look at those waves. They keep creeping up. They're getting closer. Just never stop. Casey, can I tell you something? Will you listen? Really listen? Sure. Anything. I do know Jake Larkin. He's my brother-in-law. I married his sister. Her name was Clara. Clara Larkin. 
my wife. We had good times together. Good times. She wanted me to be somebody. And I tried. Tried awfully hard. But I just couldn't make it. Yeah, sure, I know. That's like me. You know, I never could get any place either. Yeah, Casey. Like you. Well, anyway, she kept after me. Night school, correspondence courses, work all day and study all night. But it just wasn't in me. I'd come home nights, dog tired. It was hard to face her. We just weren't getting any place. Oh, that's too bad. Then you do understand. Why, sure I do. Well, then, one day, she was taken sick. And before I knew it, she couldn't walk anymore. Paralyzed from the waist down. My beautiful wife. Oh, gee, that's too bad. Hey, how did I ever figure that in three hours it'll be high time? Casey, you said you were my friend, didn't you? Yeah. Then you've got to listen to me. My whole story, all of it. Will you do that? I guess so. Well, I kept on working and coming home nights and sitting with my wife and listening to her. And there she was, cooped up in one room, staring at four walls, waiting for the night, watching for the day. It wasn't a very shiny world for her. This was our life for five years. And I want you to hear it. Will you listen? Go ahead, Sam. I'll listen. Well, one night I came home, tired, discouraged. I could hardly get up the steps. And I... part way. Tired? No, not very. And you? No, dear. How could I be lying in bed all day? Don't, dear. I'm sorry. Doctor was here today. Good news? No. He said there wasn't any use in his coming anymore. Darling. Just as well, Sam. There'll be no more doctor bills. I don't care about the bills. I want you to walk. I know you do, dear, but if I can't, we must make the best of it. That's easy to say. Sam, come and sit here beside me. Hold my hand like you used to. My poor darling. Sam, do you love me? Why do you ask that? Because you never tell me anymore. Don't you know? I want to hear it. I love you, Clara. Oh, Sam, I'm sorry if I've nagged you. I wanted you to be something you couldn't be. I was wrong. Don't, Clara. You lie here all day, imagining things. Wouldn't it be wonderful if I could live my life over again? Maybe this pain is a punishment. Stop it. Will you, Clara? All right, all right, Sam. Why don't you go for a walk or to a movie, maybe? I've been away all day. Can't we just sit and talk? Without getting morose. My brother dropped in today. Jake? What did he want? Nothing. He usually has a reason for coming around. Oh, well, he, he only... Well, one. how is Jake? <laughs> I suppose he was bulging with money as usual. Dressed fit to kill. He did look nice. I don't want his kind of dough. He just wanted to help me, Sam. How? Oh, get another doctor. Well? It wouldn't do any good. I've had other doctors. They all say the same thing. That's not the reason you turned him down. Yes, it was. No. You turned him down because you have a husband who's too proud to accept charity. No. A husband who'd much rather see his wife suffer. Oh, 
you're not fooling me, Clara. He wanted something else, too. No, Sam. He wanted to take you away, didn't he? Didn't he? Yes. Why didn't you go? He's no good, you know, Dad. He's your brother. Plenty of easy money. Might make you walk again. You should have gone. Now, please, Sam, I don't want to talk about it. Read, read to me. What do I read? Here. Here, read this. Poetry? Oh, it's beautiful. I can't read poetry. Oh, come on, now. Here, start here. Well, how do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love thee to the depth and breadth and, and height my soul can reach when feeling out of sight for the ends of being and ideal grace. I love thee to the level of every day's most quiet need by sun and candlelight. I love thee freely as men strive for right. I love thee purely as they turn from praise I love thee with a passion put to use in my old griefs and with my childhood's faith. I love thee with a love I seem to lose with my lost saints. I love thee with a breath, smiles, tears of all my life. And if God choose, I shall but love thee better after death. Isn't that wonderful? Yes, it is. Who wrote it? Elizabeth Browning. She must have been lovely. Yes. Look, look Sam. What, what is it? There, there's smoke coming from under the door. What? Here, put your robe oh, on. Sam. Hurry, Clara. Wait. Here, I'll help you. Here, now, put your robe on. I'll open the door. The stairs are on fire. Clara. No. Sam, you can't carry yes, me. It's four flights down. Yes, I can. <laughs> Don't struggle, Clara. Here, put this over your head. Sam, let me stay here. What? Don't you see? It's better this way. Let me stay here. Are you mad? Here, put your arm around my neck. You can't carry yes, me. Yes, I can. Hold on to me. Don't you understand, darling? I want to stay here. I'll always be helpless like this. If I stay, you'll be free. You'll have a chance to be something. You're coming with me. No. We'll go down the stairs. Sam, let me stay. You think I'm a murderer? It wouldn't be murder. No one would know. I'm giving you a chance for a new life. Take it. No! We'll never get down the stairs together, Sam. If, if you go alone. You hold this over your head. Do you understand? Goodbye, Sam. Clara! Stop struggling! Clara! did that for me. She deliberately broke away from me and threw herself into the fire. Gee, well, what about you? Oh, they were able to get me out all right. But she... Oh, gee, that was bad, little fella. Then you do believe me. You do believe that it wasn't my fault. Oh, sure. She wanted to die, didn't she? Yes, I think about such things, too. If you believe me, then. Untie me. Let me go. I can't. Jake would be mad, and he's my boy. No, he'll never know. It's funny, ain't it? I mean, the way she died, and, and now you're going to drown? No. Untie me, Casey. Don't you understand? Jake wants me to die because he thinks I left his sister to burn to death. But you know the truth now. 
You can save me. Well, it wasn't your fault. No. Untie me. But I got my orders. I can't go back on them. But this is really murder, Casey. Do you understand that? Oh, no, little fella. I'm only doing what I'm told. I got to keep my job, don't I? They'll find out, Casey. And you'll be punished. Well, Jake told me not to worry. He'd take care of me. Let me go to Jake. Let me tell him my story. You can do that for me, can't you? No. Jake don't want to talk to you. Casey, be reasonable. Hey, if you keep yelling like that, I'm going to have to hit you. You idiot! Don't you understand, you blind, stupid... What did you call me, little fella? I didn't mean it, Casey. I didn't mean it. I don't like what you called me. I heard that one before. I thought you were my friend. I am your friend. Untie me. I gotta be going. I done everything just like Jake told me, and now I gotta be going. Casey. So long, Sam. Casey. Casey. A dog. Just like you told me. Well, it was my $50. Hey, hey, boss, can I have my... Your $50? Do you know what you've done? Well, what did I do? I, I did just like you told you me. You murdered an innocent man. Why? Because you told me to. After he told you what happened to my sister, didn't you realize he was innocent? Well, I did just like you told me. Oh, Don't you... be sore, Jack. Oh, you idiot, you stupid, stupid idiot. What did you call me? Wait a minute. Don't pull any of that up on me. Stay where you are. You called me that name, too. I don't like that. Casey. Hey, Casey, remember, I'm your boss. I thought you was my friend, too. Casey. Oh, don't pull a gun on me, boss. Oh, stay away from me. <laughs> oh, stay away from me. <laughs> Casey. Casey. Casey, that's right, Jake. No. My name's Casey. Not what you said. Hey, Jake. Hey, Jake. No. No. No, I, I ain't got no boss. No. No, I ain't got no boss. <laughs> Suspense. Presented by Roma Wines, R-O-M-A, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is Truman Bradley for Roma Wines. Here's America's choice for what to serve guests these hot, sultry summer evenings. It's Roma Wine Lemonade, a tall, tempting treat of thirst-quenching frostiness that lowers your temperature and raises your spirits with the first few thrilling sips. Delight your family or friends with a praise-winning Roma Wine Lemonade. You simply place ice and the juice of half a lemon in a tall glass. Pour three quarters full with Roma California Burgundy or any other Roma wine type you prefer. Then fill with water and sweeten to taste. You can prepare Roma wine lemonade in a few seconds and enjoy its cool refreshment for hours. Remember, Roma, America's favorite wine, costs no more than ordinary wine. So insist on Roma, America's first choice. That's R-O-M-A, Roma Wine, for a delicious Roma Wine Lemonade. Sheldon Leonard will soon be seen in the Frank Capra production, It's a Wonderful Life. Elliot Reed appears through the courtesy of Paramount Pictures, producers of To Each His Own. Next Thursday, same time, Roma Wines will bring you Mr. Michael O'Shea as star of Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills. Produced by William Spear for the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>